fuck so jump and get yeah. knocked just as quick as your hot My fist work like all oh, I can give you shot. Before J. Cole was nominated for five Grammys in just four years, before J. Cole would start making music with some of the biggest names in the business, including DJ Khaled, Jay Z, Kendrick Lamar, and Drake, before becoming the first rapper in 25 years to have an album go platinum without having any features, before dropping his diss track, False Prophets, where he calls out Kanye West and longtime collaborator Wale. Jermaine Cole was a young kid growing up in North Carolina, the son of his African American father and white mother. He was a gifted child in school and played the violin. No. Hey, let's give the guy a break, he's a little rusty. By the age of 12, all of Jay's focus had shifted to him practicing his rhymes, expanding his musical knowledge, and working on his vocabulary. And I remember coming home and putting it in this tape player and just being like, oh my god, what is this? Through his teens, his dreams of producing and performing grew stronger and stronger. When it came time to go to university, Jay only applied to schools in New York City so that he could pursue a career in the music industry while also getting his degree. How smart. By 2010, J. Cole was making the best new artist list for the year and also signed a deal with Jay Z's label Rock Nation. Not bad. In just four short years, J. Cole would go from being the opening act on Drake and Rihanna's tour to one of the biggest rappers in the game, dropping three platinum albums, including the number one hit 2014 Forest Hill Drive, which would inspire a documentary series, an HBO special, a live album, and a bunch of memes, which were absolutely hilarious. Some of the best. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCrudden, and welcome to Before They're Famous. This is an updated bio on North Carolina rapper J. Cole, which you guys have been requesting. As always, if you have any requests, leave them for us in the comments down below. Well, make sure everyone is happy, happy, and don't forget that. Cole was born Jermaine Lamar Cole on January 28, 1985 at a US military base in Frankfurt, Germany. Jermaine and his brother Zach, they are both biracial, their mother Kay is white, and their biological father was African American, both of whom served in the US military. When the boys were still quite young, they were supposed to relocate as a family to Fort Bragg in Fayetteville, known to many as Fayetteville, due to its crime rate and rough neighborhoods. Jay's mother brought him and his brother over, but his father took this move as an opportunity for him to skip out on the family, deciding not to join them in the United States. This abandonment and lack of a father figure is something that Jay documents and works through in his music today. When it was just me and my brother and my mother played father, cause no other main bother, not even my biological. His mother Kay got a job at the Sundowner Lounge as a bartender, making $2 an hour to support the family. With some encouragement, she eventually applied to become a US postal worker and got the job. With her new salary of $17 an hour and the combined income of the boy's new stepfather, well, the family were able to move into their first real home. That was at 2014 Forest Hill Drive. At the age of 11, J. Cole finally had his own room to himself where he was free to explore his growing passion for music and rap. In my own room, I could do things like zone out to the music I wanted to hear. I could do things like rap in front of the mirror. The 12 year old aspiring rapper went through some different style changes over the years before he finally found his own voice. When he first started, he emulated his favorite rapper, Master P, and the No Limit movement. I'm a motherfucking soldier. I'm smoking on that doge. I wasn't smoking that. <laughs> Like 12, 13. After that, he began to focus on his battle rap skills. Hate up proof, straight up true. Went and got my weight up, God, now I'm straight up Zeus. And by 15, he finally began to develop his raps as a way to tell stories. He'd also become a huge fan of the local rap group, Bomb Shelter. After emailing the group repeatedly, they responded, inviting him to a show. At this time, Bomb Shelter would include a freestyle segment at their concerts, inviting up people from the crowd to battle. It is here that a 15 year old J. Cole faced his fears and performed publicly, beating out other rappers who were already in their 20s. From there on out, J. Cole was always welcome at Bomb Shelter Studio, and he would ask his mom to drop him off there every day so he could take note of all the equipment he needed to make his own beats for his rhymes. I saw he had a beat machine. I begged my mom every day for a beat machine. She made it happen, and she got this thing right here. It's my very first. Beat machine. Now despite the fact that the beat machine is a thousand dollar piece of equipment, the family was not doing well financially or emotionally for that matter. Jay remembers his mother having to search for enough change in the morning to give him a dollar fifty for lunch money. Jay's stepfather was abusive and his brother Zach was bullied at home and in school due to his light skin color. 
yeah, people saw, well, he's different, go get him. All of these issues would be retold in Jay's raps, such as Breakdown, Three Wishes, and his verse on Mama Told Me. Despite his troubled home, J. Cole stayed positive and motivated, excelled in school, working part-time at the skating rink, and honing his skills making beats with Bomb Shelter under the name Blaza and Therapist. When it came time to pick a university, Jay only applied to schools in New York City because of its ties to the rap music industry. And in 2003, after graduating from Terry Sanford High School with a 4.2 grade point average, well, he was accepted to St. John's University and he got a scholarship. Shortly after he left for school, things back home they took a turn for the worse. Jay's stepfather had been on extended assignment in Thailand. During this time, he stopped paying the mortgage without telling the family. When the bank foreclosed on the home, well, Jay's mother, she found out that she was not only losing her house, but also her husband. Kay was forced to move into an apartment and soon found herself in an unhealthy new relationship and addicted to crack cocaine. During this time, Jay continued to work hard in New York, studying computer science, business, and communications, all while still working on his music. And he had a lot on his mind. His mom was in trouble. I present to you the story of a young man who left everyone and everything he loved to chase his dream. After graduating in 2007, Jay focused on getting his name and beats out there, but it was a rough start. I waited outside for Jay-Z for like three hours in the rain, me and E, hoping he would come. And by the grace of God, he came, but it didn't happen like I thought. He just dissed me and was like, get out of here. But fate is a funny thing, and one year later, he would find himself face to face with Jay-Z again, and this time, he actually wanted to hear his music. Long story short, somebody got it to somebody who got it to Jay. From the success of his mixtape, The Warm Up, Jay was signed to Rock Nation, working on the Blueprint 3 for Jay-Z, and being named one of Double XL's 2010 Top Freshmen. In 2011, he dropped his first full studio album, Cold World, which reached number one on the Billboard 200, and went platinum in the US. Yeah! From the overwhelming success off that first album, Jay was finally able to help his mother recover from her addiction. He also bought her a house and she was able to quit her job at the post office. He even decided to take her as his date to the Grammys. How sweet. I brought my mom, mama. And you brought your mom? This is hip hop. Well, well, well. This is hip hop royalty right well. here. You know, I take my mama on dates all the time, which actually reminds me, mom, I'm gonna pick you up tonight at eight. Okay? She watches all the videos, so. Hi, Mom! His follow-up album, Born Sinner, was released on October 18, 2013, and was another hit for Jay. Once again, reaching number one on the Billboard Top 200 and going platinum in the US. Jay even adjusted its release date so that Born Sinner would be a contender against Kanye West's Yeezus. Now, Kanye's album did beat out Born Sinner. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. But only by 30,000 copies. I don't want, I, that's fine, but yeah. don't talk to me. Jay has since dropped a third album, 2014, Forest Hill Drive. It premiered at number one on the Billboard Top 200 and sold over 350,000 copies. In its first week, despite no promotion or singles being out beforehand, Jay received another Grammy nomination for Best Rap Album and won Album of the Year at the BET Hip Hop Awards and top rap album at the Billboard Music Awards. And of course, if you have ever been on the internet, you've probably heard the 2014 Forest Hill Drive made J. Cole the first rapper in 25 years to go platinum with no features on the album. <gasps> You know what I mean? Since then, Jay has not slowed down. He started in a docu-series, J. Cole, Road to Homecoming, and has had his own HBO Live concert special. I'm trying to make a million dollars off a of rap song. Jay has also been able to buy back 2014 Forest Hill Drive for $120,000 and plans to run it as a place for families to live for little or no rent so they can get back on their feet. On top of his charity work, Jay was also named one of the 16 artist shareholders of Title by Jay-Z, giving him a small stake in the company. I know the company isn't doing that great, but still it's something. And in 2016, he has appeared on DJ Khaled's new album, as well as performed with Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Chance the Rapper at the Hillary Clinton rally out in Cleveland. This is big. We appreciate it for this. Obviously that didn't work out, but I think it's safe to say it wasn't J. Cole's fault. 
On December 1st, 2016, artwork and a track list for his new album, For Your Eyes Only, was revealed and a few days later, Jay dropped not one, but two diss tracks, False Prophets and Everybody Gotta Die. Line up niggas in order of who you think can really fuck with me most, then I tuck the heat close, if he don't duck then he ghosts. On the tracks, Jay targets Yeezy, Lil Yachty, Lil Uzi Vert, and also his longtime friend Wally. While he responded one day later with his own diss track, Groundhog Day. Now before you start to pick sides, or get excited that we may have another Drake Meek Mill situation, just know that it's maybe all in good fun. Wale and Jay were seen at a basketball game together, which Wale posted to Twitter. And good old little Uzi Vert, well he seemed delighted at the prospect of a battle. As for how will the record perform or for what's next for J. Cole and his career, well we'll just have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCredden, we make all sorts of celebrity bios for you and you guys have been requesting this one because when his new album is coming out, the guy's as hot as he'll ever be, right? We thought he'd be a one hit wonder the first time we did this video. But uh, whew, they proved me wrong. Let us know who you want to see a video about in the future, if it's updated or a brand new one. We're working on Young M.A. We're also working on Little Dirk, Denzel Curry. But we're looking for more suggestions in the comments down below. See you guys in the next video.